Google has released Gemini 2.5, and it's looking like it's a great model. But if you look at the way that they've been marketing it on YouTube, there's a little bit of subtlety that needs to be taken into account, because the prompt is actually cheating a little bit. Again, the model is great, let's not doubt that. But I do want to talk a little bit about this one thing that their demos do uh, that might help set some expectations on your end. So what am I talking about? Well, let's just check this one video over here. So this is the first demo. You can also read the prompt that they are applying here. So something about fish in this particular case. There's a little demo of how you can put it in the UI. And then supposedly this is what comes out. And I'm willing to believe this. You can see that there are pretty fish and you can see that they also have some text. And, you know, there's a little bit of a blurb at the end. Just for good measure, let's do a second video. Let's go uh, for this one. And this is one of those famous hexagon demos. In this particular case, they're going for a swarm of voids. Again, they insert the prompt. And after a few seconds, you can see this pretty demo. So, okay, this Gemini thing seems to be doing something quite nicely. Now, the reason why that last demo was so interesting to me was because I was actually trying to create something like that a few months ago. And it definitely took me a bit of effort. I was able to use Claude to create these voids that swirl around kind of in a rock, paper, scissors kind of a phenomenon. Um, there's a demo up on my blog, and uh, you can see that these dots, they kind of chase each other. Zoom out a little bit there. But building this actually took a fair amount of effort, mostly because of the performance here. There's a little bit of collision detection happening here, and getting the LLM to produce that just the right way uh, definitely took a little bit of time. I think right now, even if I were to just increase the number of uh, voids that I'm generating, um, I think if I go for like really big numbers, you can actually see it slow down. Uh, just a little, not, not too bad though. I'm pretty happy with these results. Anyway, uh, this was made with Claude, and I think like six months ago, something like that. So that made me curious, and I wondered what would the Gemini model do in this case? I was toying around with this last night, and I did just realize that I wasn't using 2.5, but 2.0, but the point that I'm about to make still holds. So this is my blog, and you can see over here that I've got a bunch of voids. They also have the attraction mechanism in there. It's a little bit different, uh, but this was effectively a... Not a zero shot, I think this was like a one shot. I asked for something and then I uh, followed it up with some suggestions. But the prompt that I used for this was basically copied from the YouTube video. The prompt here was P5JS demo of boys that do rock, paper, scissors, attracting and pushing away. And you know, um, the demo does what it says on the tin. The fact that I'm able to get here without a whole bunch of prompting, especially the fact that it's nice and performant, you know, uh, super cool. But at the same time, I couldn't help but notice that there was actually one key term in this prompt, and that's the term that we're starting with, uh, P5.js. Now, the thing that's really interesting about P5.js is that it's actually this toolkit for artists, designers, and uh, I guess people who like to make pretty things that are interactive. And it's also a library that's really specialized for that. It's a library that comes with tools to make that relatively easy. And if you were to instruct something like Gemini to actually use a tool that's very helpful, you can also imagine that it's going to be a lot easier for the LLM to implement the thing that you want in this particular case. We can go to the example section, and uh, here's an example of smoke particles, just to highlight a thing that it can do. And, you know, I can move the smoke particles around. But, okay, we are using a toolkit here that's very specialized to making these interactive things happen. So that got me thinking, right? What would happen to this demo if I remove that P5.js bit? If I were to do that, then would Gemini still be able to make something pretty and quickly? And it turns out that it actually just uh, fails completely when you do that. Um, here's the iframe of the result if you just remove that P5.js bit. And yeah, um, I don't know exactly what it's doing. It's sort of moving around. It's uh, uh, jiggling and wiggling. And I've tried it a bunch of times with the same prompt, but in general, the image that I'm depicting here is fair in a sense of it really has a hard time coming up with a thing that's what I'm interested in. If I don't add that one term, that P5.js bit is super important here. It's effectively a keyword without which generating this is super hard. And that brings me back to the YouTube channel. On the day of release, there were six videos that were being shared that had a good demo. And out of these six, this one, this one, and this one all refer to the P5.js library. Part of me is thinking, well, is that cheating? And that feels a little bit unfair, because you could also argue it's a good prompt. But if that's the case, then maybe what's being demoed here is a good prompt and not necessarily a great LLM model. Even though I should stress, my impression is that Gemini 2.5 is actually pretty darn good. There's another example down below over here that's strictly using Plotly Express. And again, I can imagine that it's not cheating because telling it to use a library is fair game. But you can imagine that the impact that it might have on you personally, like, oh, this is such a good demo. Part of that isn't Gemini. Part of that is also just having a really good prompt. And that also means that if you're going to compare Gemini to maybe other models, 
you should maybe keep that in the back of your mind.